Hi, it's Jack Kaluki from Nitrix and I'll talk about the contribution of research and development to the evolution of nitriding process control and quality. When nitriding was invented by accident over a hundred years ago, the mechanisms behind the process were not known. The process patented at the time carried one important advantage, hardening of surfaces without affecting the core hardness. But the process wasn't well understood nor controlled. Nitriding had another inconvenient issue. A very hard steel becomes brittle, and this is why extremely hard materials may shatter like glass. Early research on understanding the mechanisms of the process was done by several scientists. Adolf Matlet and, at the end of World War I, by Adolf Frey, C.B. Sawyer, and Lehrer. At the same time, large steel manufacturers, such as Krupp, today's Thyssen Krupp, started understanding the benefits of the process and developed the first steel alloys designed especially for nitriding, called nitralloys. The process still had one huge drawback, the necessity to remove the white layer and grind off the surface, which has become too brittle to be used. 90 years ago, an iron nitrogen diagram was introduced by Lehrer, a German metallurgist who treated thin iron foils to understand the process of atmosphere composed of ammonia and hydrogen. This diagram related temperature and nitrogen potential, allowing to accurately determine the phase boundaries in the iron-nitrogen system. A major breakthrough, the layer diagram allows us to better understand both the nitriding process and the microstructures it can produce. The next step forward came from an American metallurgist, Carl Flow. The flow process consists of a first stage with a high nitriding potential or high ammonia concentration necessary to build the white layer. In the second stage, the process switches to a reduced or diluted ammonia flow to reduce oversaturation. Controls may have relied on fixed flows or manual adjustment, but this was a first step in the right direction. The last 35 years have been marked by a great deal of improvements. For instance, the Lehrer iron nitrogen diagram has been further modified to incorporate curves representing constant nitrogen concentration in iron as a function of temperature and nitriding potential, and similarly to account for shifts that happen because of all of the alloying elements. All those improvements required a huge R&D effort. At Nitrix, we had recorded approximately 15,000 different trials and experiments since 1994. This number excludes earlier experiments and experiments with incomplete documentation. Today, not only can we target the nitriding potential at any given temperature, but we can also predict the result and avoid costly mistakes. In a nutshell, R&D has contributed to improving nitriding, the process controls and quality, and the cost of finished products. Driven by science, industry, and the necessity to stay ahead in new applications and materials, nitriding and nitrocarburizing are constantly evolving and adapting. Click on the screen right now to watch another video on nitriding and nitrocarburizing. Make sure to leave a like or a comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.